On the 9th of May this year, a regional jet going into Boston Logan International Airport had to go around not once, but twice, and then it had to follow up with a divert. You're not going to believe why they had to go around the second time. Let's take a look. 5739, Okay, the main player here is Brickyard 5739, an original jet going into Boston Logan International Airport. The weather is not great at Boston today. 6,000 RVR is what's reported. It's kind of an overcast day. Visibility is not terrific. Uh, so they're not visual flight rules going in. That's going to be a factor here in just a few minutes on their second go around. Let's take a look at the first go around. 5739, reduced speed to 150. Okay, they're a fair distance away from the airport, and they're already being slowed down to 150 knots. That's the first clue to me as a pilot that I might be, that accordion effect, I might be too close to the airplane in front of me. So he slows down, but is it enough? Let's see. Break hour 5739, cancel approach clearance. I'm going to maintain 3,000, fly present heading. Okay, so he has to cancel approach clearance. Now, is this a classic go around? Uh, no, it's more like a missed approach because uh, he's quite a distance from the airport. And in fact, in my opinion, the way we practice for missed approaches, this is one of the more difficult ones because you're not going to go through the normal procedure of cleaning up. He might not even be configured yet with his gear down and so forth, but he's going to follow the instructions, maintain 3,000 feet, and then he's going to get some uh, turns here. Let's All right, cancel out. approach, uh, present heading up to 3,000, we care for the south there. All right, runway heading 3,000. Care for the 739, speed your discretion, turn left heading 360. Turn left heading 360. 190 knots, 360, uh, break your 5739, reason for going. Okay, a lot of pilots will ask that question at that point. He says, reason for going? He wants to know, why are we going around? Everything seemed pretty normal. Is there something I can't see? He's going to get an answer to that in just a minute. What was the heading for Brickyard 5739? Brickyard 5739, no problem. Turn left heading 270. Left to 270, Brickyard 5739. Okay, seeing his left-hand turn. Brickyard 5739, turn left heading 230. 230, Brickyard 5739. What is the reason for going? Brickyard 5739, you had a heavy in front of you and needed five miles. The compression is pretty bad with the tailwind component. It's just going to drop below five miles, so it's going to be safe. Okay, oh, so the reason for going around was he was compressing. He was getting a little too close to a heavy that was in front of him. Why is that an issue? Well, we use the heavy call sign on those larger aircraft because of the wake turbulence behind the aircraft. So the smaller jets have to really be aware of that because they don't want to get caught up in the wake turbulence and have something go wrong. So five miles is the standard separation. Now, well, why did he get so close? Was he going too fast? No. In fact, he had slowed to 150. But there was a tailwind coming into Boston on that runway that day. You say, well, why didn't they change runways? Many times the wind down on the surface is 180 degrees out from the wind at 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 feet where they were. So sometimes coming in, you can have a tailwind which will push you faster, but the guy that is down below that's slowing down, he now is facing a headwind, so he's slowing down even more. That's where the compression comes from. It was unavoidable today. They're on the go around. Are they gonna make it in on the second turn? Let's see. Brickyard 5739, just going to maintain 2,000. 2,000, Brickyard 5739. Brickyard 5739, turn left, left turn heading 120. Left to 120, Brickyard 5739. So he's being set up now for the second approach. Brickyard 5739, reduce speed to 180. Yeah, that's standard, slow to 180. Brickyard 5739, reduce speed to 170. 170, Brickyard 5739. Again, that's standard. They're going to slow you down like that coming in. Brickyard 5739, reduce speed to 150. So on to 150s, really kind of slow. Turn left, heading 0, All right, I want you to listen to what's going on. He slowed him to 150, but he just gave him 160. So he's now he's speeding him up again. Uh, you know, I don't know. They're trying to get the spacing right. There's going to be another one. Zero seven zero three. I left four right. Good job. Fifty seven thirty nine. Fifty seven thirty nine. Increase speed. One seven zero. Not smelt. 
170 mil break in 57, 39. Okay, so he slowed him down to 150, then he gave him 160. Now he's speeding him up again. He wants to get him at, at milt at a certain juncture here, uh, but it's not going to go well after this, and here's why. Listen. 37, 39, connect tower, 128.8. Hey, we'll see if we get 37. All right, so he switched over to tower. Everything's going along smoothly. Right, 57, 39, four right. 57, 39, lost tower, phone Airbus, two miles on over my four right, clear to land, traffic holes across the runway. Okay, everything is fine. Clear to land. Four right. I've landed on this runway many times. I was based in Boston for a dozen years. Uh, there's a there's a, uh, a body of water uh, in front of runway four. And so there's an issue sometimes with the ships and so forth coming into the harbor. Uh, something's going to develop here in a minute that's going to cause them to go around. Every care, 50 south 39. We got 5739, uh, fly runway heading 19, 3000, tall vessel in the four right approach area. Oh, go around tall vessel in the four right approach area. And this is something that happens on rare occasion. It's in all of the notes as you go into London, or not London, but Boston on four left or four right, that there may be maybe a cargo ship coming up. Now, these uh, cargo ships are not really accounted for in terms of the glide path in. And when visibility is reduced, you might not be able to see it to maintain visual separation from a tall ship that's in the harbor. So since they're on an instrument approach and not on a visual approach, uh, they have to go around because they just know telling how high above you'll be of that ship and how long that ship is going to be there. Now, typically the ship is only there for 60 to 90 seconds. Sometimes it's there longer. In this case, yeah, it's going to be longer. Listen. Uh, the runway heading 3000, we got 5739. We're declaring main fuel. Okay, so the first thing he does is you can hear the exasperation in his voice because this is the second go around now. Very unusual. I've never gone around twice. Uh, I've gone around once, but never twice. Uh, 3000 feet, he gives his call sign and he says, We're declaring min fuel right away because now he's done this couple times. They have the fuel for it, but declaring min fuel is a procedural thing. It's not really an emergency, but it says I need priority handling. There's no more goofing around here. I can't really come in around and do this again. I can't stand any more delays. I got enough to get back around and land, but let's keep things moving. That's what he's saying. Back to approach 133.0 3 and copy the minimum fuel. Break your 5739, 3000, man, fuel. Okay, 5739, turn left heading uh, 290. Okay. 5739, turn left heading 290. 5739. Okay, 5739, Boston, you with me? Uh, yes, sir, 3000. We got 5739, uh, Boston departure, radar contact. Come and maintain 4000, turn left heading 290. 4000, 290, we got 5739, we're in fuel. Okay, so he's declared min fuel, I think, three times now altogether. He's going to continue to do that. He's going to divert to Providence now. Now, the reason for that is in a minute or two, he's going to come back around. They're going to vector him for a third approach into Boston, but they're going to tell him about 60 seconds from now uh, that there's going to be a 15-minute delay coming back into Boston. That's due to that tall ship in the harbor. They're not 100% sure how long it's going to stay there or how fast it's moving. It might be moving very slowly to get out of the harbor. And they've got to give it quite a bit of berth, if you will, before they can start bringing airplanes back into four left and four right due to the low visibility at the airport that day. As soon as this pilot hears 15 minute delay, he's like, nope. Can't do that, uh, you know, because what if I got to go around again? I don't have enough fuel for that. I'm already at minimum fuel. Let's go to my alternate Providence. Providence is only a few miles away. It's a straight shot down there. He gets vectored around straight into Providence. He declares min fuel every time he talks to a new controller, and he ends up on the ground there safely. They get refueled. A few minutes after that, they launch back off into Boston, and everything is wonderful and fine. But this is a situation that doesn't happen very often. One go-around is unusual. Two uh, go-arounds is absolutely unprecedented. And then getting into a min fuel situation and having to go to your alternate, this is really kind of the trifecta of things that go on.
uh, on a day when there's low visibility and you have to always expect the unexpected, especially going into Boston, because there can be on the four on runway four left and four right, there can be a tall ship that just kind of messes your whole day up and off you go to Providence. These guys do a fantastic job of handling all of those things. A little bit of exasperation in their voice, but I'm here to tell you there would be a lot of exasperation in Captain Steve's voice after that second go around. Good choice to go to Providence. Uh, and uh, everybody was delayed a little bit, but everybody was safe. And that's the bottom line on what we do here. So now you know, my friends, I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.